This is Universe by Kaufman. Let's take a look at this book. It's a solid hardcover. So in this quick video, we're just gonna take a quick look at this book so you can see what it's about. So look at this, this is cool. The night sky in winter. The night sky in spring, wow. That's cool. Hydra, Corvus, Leo, Regulus. Wow. Universe by William J. Kaufman III. Let's check the copyright. This is pretty old. Yeah, it's from the 80s. I believe this is the first edition. 1985. Wow, it's a long time ago. I'm going to give it a whiff here. Just, yeah, smells pretty old. Doesn't have a... Let me just, let me just give it another whiff here just to get a fair assessment. Yeah, it smells a little musty. It doesn't, doesn't have a great smell, but it has a lot of content. So let me show you all the content that you can find uh, in this book. So it starts with astronomy and the universe. You see all kinds of stuff there. Knowing the heavens, and then eclipses and the astronomy of antiquity, gravitation and the motions of the planets. Then we have some stuff here, lights, optics, and telescopes our solar system, sun-scorched Mercury, cloud-covered Venus. Let's go ahead and go to the next, next page. There's a lot more, there's a lot of, a lot of content uh, in this book. I'll go a little quicker here. Our living Earth, our barren moon, the Martian invasions, Jupiter, Lord of the planets, the Galilean satellites of Jupiter, the spectacular Saturnian system, the outer worlds, Interplanetary Vagabonds, The Laws of Light, The Nature of the Stars, Our Star, The Birth of Stars. And it's all about the universe, stellar maturity and old age, stellar death, neutron stars, black holes. And so if you've wondered about this stuff, this is a good book to learn from. Our galaxy, galaxies, quasars and active galaxies, cosmology and the creation of the universe, guts, inflation, and the fate of the universe. Astronomy and the Universe, the Horsehead Nebula. Wow, look at that. Let's, let's zoom in there so you can see that. It's pretty amazing, right? Astronomy is the study of the universe, it says here. A brief preview here of following chapters provides an outline of the scope and content of astronomy. We introduce important tools such as powers of 10 notation and angular measure. We learn just a little about the solar system, stars, nebulae, and galaxies enough to get a sense of what we will be going in this book. Above all, we learn that the universe is indeed comprehensible. Although some questions remain unanswered, we find no reason to think that any aspect of the physical universe is arbitrary or unexplainable. Let's read this here, the Horsehead Nebula. This is really cool. New stars are forming in the clouds of interstellar gas and dust shown in this photog photograph which covers an area of the sky approximately, wow, that, that there. The gases glow because of the radiation emitted by newborn massive stars. Dark regions, such as the horse head, are caused by dust grains that block light from the background nebulosity. The very bright star to the left of the center of is this one here, Orionis. The easternmost star to the, is in the belt of Orion. Most of the stars and nebulosity in this photograph are 1,600 light years from Earth. Wow, that's really, really far. Really, really far. 1,600 light years, super far away. And then here you see some pictures. So you can see it's, it's an actual textbook uh, on, on the universe that you could use to learn. The nature of the stars. Let's, let's, let's see what this says here. says, although they appear only as brilliant pinpoints of light, the stars are known to be huge, massive spheres of glowing gas, much like our sun. Astronomers have measured the distances to many of the nearer stars. In this chapter, we also learn about ways in which astronomers determine the luminosities, surface temperatures, masses, and other properties of stars. We make our first acquaintance with the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which reveals the various fundamental types of stars. Finally, we turn to the topic of binary stars, those surprisingly common systems in which two stars orbit about each other. Binary stars are a very important source of information for the astronomer seeking data about the stars. Cool. Cool. Let's 
See, there is some mathematics, obviously, so some logarithms. Stellar death. Let's take a look at this. Look at the picture. Look at this picture. It's pretty cool, all right? Let's take a look at stellar death. See what it says here. A planetary nebula, dying stars often eject their outer layers. A low mass star can lose half its mass in a comparatively gentle process that produces a planetary nebula. The exposed stellar core typically has a surface temperature of about 100,000, I guess that's kelvins, and it's roughly one-tenth the size of the sun. Ultraviolet radiation from the hot stellar core causes the surrounding gases to glow. The greenish color of this planetary nebula, NGC 653, is due to doubly ionized gas. The central star in this nebula has exhausted all its nuclear fuel and is gravitationally contracting to become a white dwarf. Wow. Wow, hardcore stuff, right? Hardcore. Interesting book. Interesting book. Yeah, kind of a cool book. I just thought I would make this uh, short video to show you this book. Subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. I will leave a link in the description uh, in case you want to check it out. Uh, so, um, oh, I have courses. Uh, links are in the description. They're on Udemy, but if you get them, use the links in my description because it helps me and plus I've lowered the prices. Or you can go to my website, mathsorcerer.com and use any of those links. Until next time, take care.